What up folks, it's Alex here and welcome back to 5 Minute Friday. Now in this video we're going to have a look at the dynamic zoom feature within DaVinci Resolve. Now the dynamic zoom does essentially what it says on the tin. It's a zoom feature which enables you to zoom in to your videos or stills within Resolve. Now the cool thing is it's nice and animated and you can change the speed of it so it gives it a nice smooth zoom. But not just that, you can also use the dynamic zoom to replicate a slider as a sort of a pan through your video from left to right. It's a really easy way to add additional movement to your footage which just makes it that little bit more interesting to watch. Now, I'm gonna throw up two 10 second clips. Now the first one is completely static, there's no movement in it at all. The second one is the exact same clips but with some, some dynamic zoom enabled and you should hopefully see how much better and how much more interesting the footage looks. And then once that's done, we'll throw open Resolve and we'll have a look at how it's done. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve and we're on the edit tab as always. Now I've got my project all set up so the first thing I need to do is just add some media so I'm just going to do that now. So here we go, I've added a short clip and also a still image. Now if I hit play you'll notice this clip is completely static. I had my camera on a tripod, I was just doing sort of a product shot and I just let it record for a little while. And obviously this is a still image so there's no movement on this one at all either now without any movement it's just not that interesting for the viewer to watch so we want to add some additional movement just to make the clip a little bit more engaging so the first thing you want to do is select your clip in the timeline make sure it's highlighted and then on the right hand side you should see this menu now if you don't see this menu on the right you just need to click on this inspector button located at the top right of your screen and it will bring this menu open now you've got things like composite, transform, cropping and then you've got dynamic zoom. Now what you want to do is flick the little switch to enable the dynamic zoom. Now if we go back to the start of the clip and just hit play again you'll see now it slowly zooms out and it will slowly and consistently zoom outward. And you've actually got a couple of options as to how it zooms. Over on the right hand side where you've enabled dynamic zoom you've got dynamic zoom ease and there's four options linear, ease in, ease out and ease in and out. Now this is nice and simple linear just means it will zoom at a consistent speed ease in means that it will start off slow and speed up as it zooms Ease out is the opposite, it will start off as a faster zoom and then it will slow down. Ease in and out means it will start off fast, slow down and then speed up again. So at the moment it was set to linear, if I change it to ease in, and we'll just play that again, you'll notice it's zooming really slowly at the start of this clip and as it gets towards the end it will start to speed up and zoom out a little bit quicker. So there are your options. Now the next thing to do is to change the level of zoom or the level of crop. So to do that, underneath your preview window, there's the transform icon down here. Now if you click the little drop down, there's an option for dynamic zoom. And you'll have these two boxes appear in your preview. You've got a green box and you've got a red box. Now again, this is nice and easy. The green box is your starting point and the red box is your end point. So if I click the corner and I can just zoom this in a little bit more. And then if I hit play, It'll start from there and it'll slowly zoom out until the end of the clip is where the red box is. And you can just experiment with that. Have a little play, move it around, get the area that you want. You don't have to go all the way out. We can go there to there. And if I hit play, it'll slowly zoom out. Now the thing to bear in mind, if you've got a greater range to cover, i.e. your green is really small and your red is really big, it will have the appearance of zooming quicker because it's got to move quicker to cover the same range. If your range is smaller, it will zoom considerably slower because it's got less distance to cover so it can move at a slower pace essentially. 
and that's how you enable and have a little mess with your dynamic zoom. Now there's slightly more that you can do with that. So let's go back to here and what I can actually do is move these around. So I'm going to click within the green box and I can just move it wherever I want. So this one won't just zoom, it will also pan across my clip. So if I hit play now, it's zooming out and it's panning across. And again, you can just have a little experiment with this. Let's say I want to move it up there. We'll start, we'll finish up there and we'll start down here. We'll hit play. And there you go. It'll just pan diagonally across the frame. Now, if you don't actually even want it to zoom, what you can do is if you just set your green box to be roughly the same size as your red box. Takes a bit of play in this, but there you go. They're about the same size. And I can put my green box over there and my red box over here in a roughly straight line. And then I can hit play. And it won't even zoom, it will just pan across the frame, simulating a sort of slider effect without actually really doing anything. Now, let's look at the still image. It works in exactly the same way. So I've got my dynamic zoom. I'm going to go from there, go from there, hit play, and there you go. And it just adds that little bit of movement to the still image, which just makes it slightly more engaging to watch. Have a play with this. It's dead easy. Just mess around with it, move them where you want, and you can just start to add some movement to your footage to just make it that little bit more interesting. And that's it. That is the dynamic zoom feature within DaVinci Resolve. And as you can see, it's a really nice, simple, quick, easy way to add some additional movement to your footage. Really cool for B-roll, especially if you haven't got a slider or a gimbal, but you want to add some additional movement to your footage. Now, definitely worth recording 4K if you have the ability. It will just give you a better quality result when you're cropping in. You won't lose too much detail if you're recording in, in 4K and then adding it onto a 1080p timeline. If you're recording 1080p on 1080p, there will be a little bit of quality loss when you crop in. Right, now one last thing before I go. I've invested in a system called Shadow. Now Shadow is actually for gamers. It's a cloud-based gaming PC. It's 26 quid a month, and the idea is you log onto this remote desktop, this virtual machine, and you can play games on it. Now I thought that was a really interesting prospect, so I thought I'd try it and see how it worked for photo editing and video editing. And actually, I'm pleased to say, really rather good. You get a really quite powerful PC which you can access from anywhere on the internet and it works really well for video editing. It's powerful enough to do 4K 24 frames per second video editing without having to create any optimized media or anything so it's quite powerful. There are some downsides to it obviously it's not a perfect solution but it's a pretty intriguing one. If you're intrigued by it, I'll put a link in the description below. Go have a little look. Um, but yeah, I'll be giving my feedback and my thoughts on it over the next week or two. So there you go. And that's it for 5 Minute Friday this week. Um, I did miss a couple. I was away, busy, got engaged. Way. So lots of stuff going on. But anyway, um, I'll be back to the routine from now on. So have a good week all, and I'll see you next time.